Chairman Jordan, Chairman Johnson, Ranking Members Scanlon and Nadler, and distinguished members of the subcommittee, thank you for inviting me today. My name is Nicole Neely, and I am the president and founder of Parents Defending Education. I am also the executive director of PDE Action and founded the campus free speech organization Speech First, so this hearing topic is one that is near to my heart. On September 29, 2021, the president of the National School Boards Association sent a letter to President Biden requesting federal intervention in school board issues, invoking, among other statutes, the U.S. Patriot Act to prove that federal engagement was warranted. Her letter stated that the classification of these heinous actions could be the equivalent to a form of domestic terrorism and hate crimes. The NSBA sought assistance from the Department of Justice, FBI, Department of Homeland Security, Secret Service, and its National Threat Assessment Center, although an early draft of the letter revealed that the NSBA also initially demanded that both the National Guard and military police be deployed against parents. Families across the country were shocked by this letter and even more taken aback when five days later, lightning speed in Washington, D.C., Attorney General Mayor Garland signed a memo on October 4th, 2021, directing the Federal Bureau of Investigation, working with each United States attorney to convene meetings with federal, state, local, tribal, and territorial leaders in each federal judicial district within 30 days of the issuance of this memorandum. Unsurprisingly, parents were frightened by this escalation. In the days following the release of DOJ's memo, we fielded dozens of requests from concerned parents who worried whether they should continue their advocacy work or simply stay home, fearing a knock at the door from federal law enforcement. Families' fears turned out to be well-founded. On October 14, 2021, the acting U.S. Attorney for Montana sent a memo to the Montana Attorney General, all county attorneys, all sheriffs, the Montana Office of Public Instruction, and the Montana School Boards Association, outlining a short summary of federal statutes that may serve as a basis for a prosecution of such threats and violent conduct. In a move that calls to mind the law school game, can you indict a ham sandwich? Two days later, on October 16, 2021, the Deputy Assistant Director of the FBI's Criminal Investigative Division sent a joint message from him to the, his division and the FBI's Counterterrorism Division announcing the creation of the threat tag EDU officials to be applied to investigations and assessments of threats specifically directed against school board administrators, board members, teachers, and staff. This memo wasn't revealed until a whistleblower provided it to this committee in November 2021. In May 2022, Chairman Jordan stated that the Committee on the Judiciary had evidence that this tag had been used against parents dozens of times. The question remains, however, what was the genesis of such a memo? On October 11th and 12th, 2021, I personally filed public records requests in the home districts of all NSBA board members to learn about the letter's creation. Those FOIA results revealed that not only were the majority of the NSBA board not told of the letter in advance, but that they were nearly all opposed to its contents. And furthermore, that NSBA leadership had been in talks with the White House over the letter's content for, quote, several weeks. In addition, I contacted each state affiliate of the NSBA to ask if their organization was involved in the creation of the letter, if they agreed with its substance and tone, and if they planned to report individuals in their state to DOJ. At last count, 26 states have either withdrawn their membership, participation, or dues from the NSBA. Attorney General Garland asserted in sworn testimony before both the House and Senate Judiciary Committees in October 2021 that his memo was written solely in response to the NSBA's letter. The NSBA apologized for its letter on October 22, 2021. Yet curiously, the Attorney General has yet to rescind DOJ's memo. Accordingly, it appears to remain in effect to this day, hanging over parents like the sword of Damocles. To be clear, my colleagues and I at Parents Defending Education have always opposed violence, and we continue to do so. Yet school boards seem to forget. Parents have a constitutional right to assemble, to speak, to petition their government for a redress of grievances. But sadly, the airing of these concerns is now viewed by elected officials as violent, offensive, or hateful, in many cases based solely upon the speaker's viewpoint. American families have many concerns about education which merit discussion and open debate, but there is no question that people have been chilled from speaking out against children's education. People, PDE has a tip line, and approximately 99% of the tips that we receive, people check a box because they want to be anonymous. They credibly fear retaliation both against themselves as well as their children. It is lamentable that pa American parents no longer trust their local school officials, but it is tragic that they now fear the federal government. Thank you for your time, and I look forward to your questions. Thank you, Ms. Neely.